I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Orlando, Florida. Colorado. I'm from Princeton, New Jersey. We all work at Duke University Medical Center in North Carolina. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Memphis, Tennessee. Medford, Oregon. Atlanta, Georgia, representing Grady Memorial Hospital. I'm from Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm um, Eleven Lancaster, South Carolina. New York. New York. <laughs> I'm from Holland. Wow. Yes, it's a long way uh, from Denver. I've been an oncology nurse for 19 years. I'm in my ninth year. I've been a nurse for about three years. This is my 25th year. Four years. I didn't know you started in 99. I did too. Over 30 years. No way. Yes way. A nurse since 2003. A little over 30. Nursing 36 years. October will be my 15th year. 16 years. 7 years. About 4 years. Almost 27 years. Just celebrated 25. 43 years. No way. <laughs> With 25 of them in oncology. My passion is to continue to deliver state-of-the-art art nursing care. Oncology nursing today is innovative and it's exciting and there's so many new therapies that are cutting edge. To educate people, to get them in for screening or diagnosis at an early stage so they will their condition will be more amenable to treatment. To educate myself on the new technologies that are out there, the new products, um, different ways to care for the patient. It's what can we do to give them better quality of life. It's letting them feel like a human again and I think that's been my greatest reward is that I've given that to people to let them feel human. I couldn't imagine doing anything different. Who wouldn't want to be an oncology nurse? <laughs> What's your favorite movie, Sarah? Oh, my favorite movie. There's so many different ones. <sighs> Pretty Woman. <laughs> Sleeping with the Enemy. Um, I'm a huge Audrey Hepburn fan. Sleepless in Seattle is probably my other. One of my favorite shows that I like to watch is Grey's Anatomy. The other one is House. A good uh, mobster flick, so I'm a Godfather fan as well. <laughs> a movie where, about me would definitely have some humor in it. I think it would need to be a drama. Oh, it would be drama. Definite drama. An actress would portray me. Hmm. I was told that I uh, was very much like Kate Jackson. Scarlett Johansson. Meg Ryan could always play me. That would be fine. <laughs> what does Hollywood get right about oncology? Not a whole lot. What they don't do right sometimes is the conversations over the patients and personal lives interjecting. The things that they don't get right is when they, they show nurses just following the doctors around and not stepping forward and, and saying what they, they think or what they feel. They're not yes people. When they show nurses as wimpy, that's not really the truth. I think Hollywood does a good job of kind of showing the um, progression of the disease and how patients who undergo chemotherapy and treatment, how it really does take a toll on them. C201, Sarah, Marker. My name's Sarah Kincaid. I'm a nurse practitioner at the James Cancer Hospital. Uh, my name is Angie Edwards, and I've been a nurse at Mount Carmel for 23 years. My name is Sandy Black, and I am from Cambridge, Ohio. I have been an oncology nurse for about 32 years.
in Mary's assessment. And we're going to take care of your dad. Is it okay if I listen to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll check back in with him on that. We have our oncology patients. Um, the PTC drain is not putting anything out. I'm not going to mess around with the abdomen yet until he has a chance to look at the one that they have already. Okay. Typical day usually starts about 4, 4.30 in the morning. I'm up early because I commute. I have an hour drive to work. Luckily, there's not a lot of traffic at that hour, so that's a good thing. We arrive there at our department. Start looking up patients. Mr. Challenge will be our first patient. Why were they admitted? Who's going to do what? Where are they coming from? You don't know if you're going to be faced with a patient who's completely alone and has no support. Is surgery an option? Do I go to this appointment with this patient? Is chemotherapy an option? You're going to be with a very large family, and you're going to have to talk individually to each one of them. Trying to figure out which fire to put out first. Do our assessment. We're looking at wounds. We're looking at drains. Understand the protocols. Talking with the pharmacist about medication changes. You find that they didn't take their medicine the way that they were supposed to. Getting patients up, ambulating them, it's getting them up to the chair, it's teaching how to take care of a wound, how to take care of an, a new ostomy. I think somewhere in there I have time to eat lunch, but... <laughs> no, she didn't, she was good. It's very demanding, um, and so I think just having an understanding of not only are these task things going on, but the nurse is also trying to connect with her patients. How to be gentle and kind about what they're gonna be facing and to let them know that they're not gonna be alone. Being able to meet people on a daily basis where they are. Trying to provide them with the care and the emotional support that these patients need to be themselves. Most of us have worked as bedside nurses before, have hung chemotherapy, have taken care of these patients. How to care for someone as they're going through that nausea and vomiting or the, the mouth sores. There's a lot of extra things that go along with it. It's not all, oh, we'll just do that and you'll be cured and you'll go along your way. Oftentimes the treatment regimens are months, year or so to get through all of the treatment you experience those things like, will I ever get through? You know, will I succeed? You know, will I ever be that person again that I was? Oncology nurses have a passion for what they do, and they are very proud every day that they go to work to care for their patients and say, I'm your nurse, how can I help you today? I decided to be an oncology nurse before I was even in high school. Um, in eighth grade, my uncle was diagnosed with cancer and I um, got the opportunity to help take care of him. Um, my job was to massage his head to make his hair come back because he had big, thick, luscious hair and he wanted it back and he, it came back. So then I decided, okay, well, I did my job, so now I need to do that full time. My first nursing job, I thought, well, I'm not turning anything down. But I would soon find out that it was right where I was supposed to be. It was truly a life changing moment. And I still remember, I tell that recruiter, like I remember exactly where I was that day we had that phone conversation because it truly changed my life. We had two family members that were diagnosed with cancer. One of them was my mother-in-law. She encouraged me to pursue nursing. We lost her within eight months of her diagnosis. And so she never was able to see me accomplish what she had so graciously encouraged me to do. And um, it was a difficult time, and yet it um, made me even stronger in my desire to pursue exactly what I had committed to her. She inspired me very, very much to do what I do today. My husband had been overseas um, in the Gulf War, and he was a firefighter, so he calls me one day and tells me that he is um, at the emergency room. And for some reason, a little voice just whispered to me, he's got cancer, and he was only 37. He only lived nine months from the date of his diagnosis. So I really, really have a, um, a need for cancer to go away. Cancer is a big focus in, in our family um, because it took away the, the one thing that we loved the most. One word that 
describes what it means to be an oncology nurse is compassionate. Passion. Compassion. You need to have compassion. You have to have that empathy, that caring, and that love and action to be an oncology nurse. Any numbness or tingling in your fingers? No. Or anything? no, just normal every day. Thank you. Absolutely, my pleasure. I'm Thank so, you. so happy with how far you've come. Aiken so still? Ache. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you don't have to stay out in the sun. I want you to be in the sun. Oh. I'm so <laughs> glad for you. I care. We may have walked in the shoes of cancer with a family member or a friend, um, but we have not walked in that patient's shoes. They need to see our love for oncology, our passion for oncology, our commitment to oncology. They need to see it being visible to them in order to survive what they're going through. You have to be able to go to the patient's bedside and talk with them and meet them where they are. These patients can often feel so overwhelmed and after the, the whole medical team comes in and tells them a bunch of things and then they leave, the nurse is the one that is there and is saying, all right, where are you? Where can I help you? Where do we need to clear things up? Love being made visible is taking their hand, hugging them, showing them we're gonna be there, we're gonna fight this, giving them all the encouragement that they need, and then being able to be truthful and honest with them too. People won't remember what you did, but they'll remember how you made them feel. I think that speaks especially to oncology nursing and what we do. We may not be able to take away their cancer, but we can make them feel like a person. You are faced many times with moments that are much bigger than you and are much greater than you can deal with on your own. You need those other individuals, those other colleagues to talk things out or to deal with those. Luckily, I work with some pretty wonderful people, the floor nurses and then my other navigators. We call each other. We send a text, you know, saying that was the worst thing that I've had to do for a very long time or that was too familiar. And sometimes you go off and, and you take a moment and you cry. Sometimes you cry with your patients. I do believe it's in my heart, and that's where I receive a lot of desire to keep on what I'm doing. This is a person, and they have emotional, spiritual needs in addition to their physical needs. I think oncology nurses are amazing at recognizing when patients are in emotional and spiritual distress. I feel like that I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there, and it happens a lot. So I feel like I was chosen to be, be where I was. Every day that you come to work and that you are engaged in the well-being of your patient and the healing of your patient, you are making a difference. Good morning. How is everyone today? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Have a great day. You too. Nobody quite has the same sense of humor or same understanding of things as your fellow oncology nurses. There are so many things that make us smile <laughs> and give us great joy in what we do. When you walk in a room and a patient hasn't seen you for a little while, I'm like, oh my gosh, Angie, how are you? How are your kids? You know, that makes you feel really good. The best part about taking care of my oncology patients is seeing them succeed. I absolutely love it. I love celebrating with them. I mean, those successes are anything from passing gas after a huge surgery and we've gone, you know, several weeks without it and finally we get return a bowel function. We do a happy dance. There are just so many things that they bring the joys of their life to us. They want to know about our life and that makes us feel good too. Even to the littlest things about being able to walk on their own. She's got her walker and she's with the nurse and she's like, I'm walking, I'm walking. And I'm, you know, go girl, go. Like she, it was awesome. And they can do it, but it all starts within. We have to be the one to have that determination and be committed to returning to that person that we want to be. It's sacred. You are with patients during some of their greatest days to the more um, difficult, tragic times. It's also very um, rewarding to see a family that 
maybe didn't have that positive result and they lost their loved one and they too still remember you and they're touched by what you did for them but you're ever so more touched by how you were able to help them and so that hug has a whole different perspective it's still that commitment that you have to what you do and what you love and why you don't want to stop it it just becomes a part of you and I can't think of any place else that I would rather be or where I would rather travel than what I'm doing today. My concern is that that's probably enough. Okay, that's perfect. So I've been putting it on twice a day. All right, thanks, Lorraine. Okay, bye. You have to be willing to kind of put yourself out there. The hours that you spend on your feet with patients um, crying with patients, lifting patients physically, emotionally, spiritually. Things change every day. New treatments are coming about. We can handle anything that's thrown at us. We can handle anything that they give us with grace. Looking at our hands as tools and implements of care. You stop and think about it. It's very, very powerful. It's these hands that not only will be giving medications or providing chemotherapy, but it's these hands that hold our patients' hands, that hold their caregivers' hands. These hands are so powerful. They provide so much back to patients. I mean, it, literally, it's like if I had something, I'd be giving it to you with my hands, but it's, it's intangible. We make sure that patients aren't deprived of their human dignity throughout their cancer journey with these hands. It's just such a privilege to care for people and to know that, that you're touching their life and you're a part of their journey again. You don't see the difficulties of previous years as today. It's so much more positive and there's so much more hope. This is a very exciting time to be involved in oncology, to be an oncology nurse because of the, the breakthroughs in research. I feel like every day there is a new breakthrough occurring. It's about life instead of death. I'm always happy when I get to see them out living their life, actually living their life and doing things other than coming to chemo, rather than coming to the doctor's appointments. It can be at the grocery store, it can be at a department store, at a, a sporting event. It's just instinctive that you want to share a hug. You want to recall that wonderful time that you had and knowing that it wasn't always wonderful, but it is now because you're a survivor. It is so wonderful to see our patients becoming who they want to be again. They're not their cancer anymore. For them to come in and visit us, just to come in and not come in because they have a problem, it's a wonderful thing and it's really nice to hear, oh, we went on this vacation or we went on that vacation and we had such a wonderful time and here are the pictures. They're able to just get back to their lives. That feels like a triumph. Our patients need you. They need you every day. They need you to guide them. They need you to be beside them. They need you to hold their hand. They need you to love them. At the end of the day, they are the ones that we are here for and who we are wanting to make a difference in their lives. Yes, we have to be on our toes. Yes, we have to continue to strive to learn all that we can so that we can be the best oncology nurse that we can be. Please take back all the good stuff that you're learning and um, put it into practice and make your practice the best practice it can be. Inspire young nurses, young oncology nurses who may be struggling. Take them in under your wing and be that mentor that makes the difference in their lives. Oncology nurses are truly some of the unsung heroes within the hospitals and that they're every day coming to work and giving their all. I mean, truly, when you hear athletes saying, leave it all on the court, leave it all on the field, we leave it all at those patients' bedsides. My heroes each and every day are the ones that I work around and work with, and again, my patients and families. 
Um, they just make it all worthwhile and make me want to go back. The heroes of this film for me, the oncology patients and the caregivers in those patients' lives. From the good, the bad, and ugly, we're there, we're with them. All those patients have a journey, and all those patients have a story, and all those patients, in my eyes, are heroes. My heroes are my patients and their day-to-day -day walk, you know, and how they inspire me to do what I do, because I couldn't do it without them. What inspires you to keep going are the patients. Yes. You know, when, when They're you... They're the biggest they are. Roles, yes. They really are. They endure a lot, and they put their trust into us to take care of them, so they may see us as their heroes because we help them, but I see them as my hero. I would definitely say the patients and their families, um, the patients, their families, and then the nurses, that take care of them day to day. They're the ones who go through it and we get to bear witness to what they're going through and they have an open heart and let us in. They have to fight every single day just to survive and just like I did, um, you know, it's a battle every day. They are showing up still laughing and engaging and loving and fighting and I just find them, I, seriously, the bravest group of people that I have encountered which is why I do what I do and why I love what I do. You see them months later, come back and visit you and thank you for all that you have done. They are willing to go through everything just to have that more time with their families and friends. It's the patients and as well as each one another because when I see that this nurse is giving that care to that patient and I'm, I admire that. Like, okay, great, you have a great heart, you're compassionate, so that's a hero of your heart. Mm -hmm. Recently, my dad and my sister have both been diagnosed with cancer and so we're going through that. So it touches me on a personal level. So that makes me more committed to doing my job for the family members because I know where they're coming from. They all want one more Christmas, one more birthday, one more whatever. Their families look to us and we look at them as heroes. To watch them go what they go through just day in and day out and they keep fighting and you see their families and you see them on their best days, on their worst days and um, just to see them keep going, it's an incredible. It gives us strength to do what we need to do. One of my heroes is right here standing before oh. us. She's one of the most amazing oncology nurses. I don't consider myself a hero. I love what I do and that's why I do it. Absolutely, 100% the patients are the heroes. What we do working with them is, is nothing in comparison to the battle that they're fighting. Their willing, willingness to help others you know, you see patients in the chemo chairs and they're helping each other, you know, talking about how to manage this or that and sharing best practices themselves. I mean, I would agree with you 100%. Um, they showed the most courage of any of us. Um, I think sometimes the most we can do is uh, when they're in their most courageous moment uh, and there's nothing else we maybe medically can do for them, just be there as a presence of their courage and it astounds me every day. By the way, that's the first time she's ever agreed with her mother. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you said it well. <laughs> so inspiring to watch them stand up strong, chin up. You know, they're not going to be defeated by cancer. Their faith and their um, will to live is just so amazing. You have to give your heart in order to love the patient, to give hope. Because they think that you are their hope. And I always told my patients, never lose hope. We get to sit beside them and, and listen to them and become part of their family. There is so much joy there because with each passing day, you see the families, the, the bonds that, that develop inside those chemo rooms, inside those chairs, family to families, uh, wife to wife, husband to husband, and watching the patients daily looking for each other, the bond that's there, and to know that we're a part of that. Going through my son's illness, um, he had two and a half years of chemo, as I said. Those nurses, I, they're, I just can't say enough, those are my heroes. So even though I'm an oncology nurse, speaking as the mother of a patient, thank you. <laughs> so, thank you. Sorry, I got a little break. <laughs> Next two of us. <laughs> thank you. He's going now.